Welcome to AP Podcast 17.7. This is on electrolysis. And ladies and gentlemen, if my uh, plan works out the way it should be, this is the last podcast you will ever see from yours truly, Mr. Richardson. I hope you've enjoyed the ride. I hope that it's been okay for you. And let's get going. First of all, what is electrolysis? Well, it's, it's what happens when you force a current through a cell to produce a chemical change for which the cell potential is negative. Now, what in the world does that mean? Well, imagine when we calculate E, right? We know that a cell is going to run as long as we get some kind of, you know, positive voltage, right? Well, let's say, for example, some of those uh, cells we were looking at, um, we were to write the reaction the reverse of way it was, and we got something like this, a minus 0.52 volts. Now, we know that that would not work. Okay, it wouldn't run all its own. But with electrolysis, what we do is we basically run that reaction or that cell backwards. And all we have to do is put some voltage, let's say 10 volts, uh, and push it. We will get that reaction to run. So you just need a voltage that's bigger and, uh, you know, sticking a battery inside that uh, where that voltmeter is. Imagine putting a battery there and we'd get it to run. So it's a real practical thing because it's used for electroplating. And uh, let me just kind of give you a visual of what I'm talking about. So here's our standard cell, right? We're used to this, and, and right up here is, is our nice little voltmeter. And we've here's our cathode, nanode, a zinc, copper cell, and the electrons are flowing, and everything works really well. Well, what would happen if we wanted to reverse this? Have the electrons go that way. Okay. It wouldn't happen on its own. It wouldn't be a spontaneous thing. and There's no free energy that, that causes that to happen. So what we need to do is stick a battery there. And notice that the voltage has got to be bigger than 110. Why 110? Well, think about it. This, this has a potential of 1.10 volts going in that direction, right? So if we want to overcome that, we need a battery that's greater than that. So as soon as we put a battery in here, you know, let's just make it a 5-volt battery. Now we can get everything going in the reverse direction. All right? And so that's what is happening during electrolysis. And what it uh, allows us to do is plate things. Um, you're, plating is like you're pu putting a very thin, thin layer of metal on some other metal. And so with plating, we can also figure out how much metal we're going to put on there, what kind of time it's going to take, what kind of voltage or current we need. And so let's look at that. Here's your last little bit of stoichiometry. Gosh, when I think about back your guys' junior year, I first showed you stoichiometry and how confusing it seems to you or seemed to you at the time. Man, oh man, have you guys ever come a long way. So now here's our last type of stoichiometry problem. Because really it's just one of those uh, converting things where once you start doing it, it becomes real trivial. So basically what we're going to do with this is we're going we're gonna to look and see uh, how much change occurs over a certain time. Now there's another term that we need, and that is current. Okay, and it's designated by I. I don't know if you can see that the script, but it's an I, and the the unit for I is an amp. An amp is simply a coulomb of charge per second. Okay, and you remember seeing coulombs because we use coulombs with a Faraday. Remember a Faraday? We've got that many coulombs per mole as a Faraday. So we can work this out to where we're just going to start converting units. And on one end is uh, if you look at my little line here one end is grams and over here is current and and time right and so basically just by using cross canceling the dimensional analysis that we've been doing for well years now we can find out either how much time it takes or uh, how many grams we could put on our surface so let's try one here we go how long must a 5 amp current be applied to produce 10.5 grams of silver from the silver plus ion okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take the starting amount which in this case is five grams right so I'm gonna take my five pardon me not five grams 10.5 grams right and what am I gonna do with 10.5 grams well of course we're gonna find moles right one mole and silver weighs hundred and seven point 
eight six or eight seven grams now that I have moles uh, what what do I want to convert it to well I want to convert it to coulombs by using a Faraday right and so one let's see moles on that so oh you know what I got I just thought about this we need to make sure we're doing moles of electrons so in this reaction what's going on silver uh, is going to silver plus plus one electron right Sorry, I'm going too fast, guys. I'm a little excited. It's the last one. Anyways, um, and let's see. we got to make sure that we've got moles to moles. It's only one electron. So one mole, for every one mole of silver, we'll have one mole of electrons, right? Hopefully that makes sense to you. I know I'm kind of being scatterbrained here. So then, now I can use my other conversion. I know that one mole of electrons... Uh, equals 96,485 uh, coulombs, right? Again, guys, what are we doing? We're just, right, we're cross-canceling. Cross-canceling, cross-canceling, and so on and so on, okay? So we've done that. Well, now I've got my moles of, now I've got my coulombs, and this is where I'm going to use this this new unit right here, okay, the amperage. Okay, as I told you, an amperage was a coulomb per second. So I've got to set it up so that uh, coulombs is on bottom, right? So I'm going to put uh, 5 coulombs per 1 second, right? And so now, now we're converting there. And so now I have seconds. And how long? I don't know what they want. Do they want minutes or seconds or hours? But let's just go one more step. I'll put a time sign there. And then I know that for every uh, one minute is 60 seconds, okay? And there you go. So through the awesomeness of dimensional analysis, cross-canceling, when you work that out and double-check with your calculator, because like I said, I'm a little fired up, I'm excited here, I'm going real fast, you get 31.3 minutes, all right? So check that again. The electrolysis calculation is just really some basic stoichiometry. So let me do one more because, again, I'm being a little, little scatterbrained here. Let's look at this one. Pause the video for a second and read that. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, 2 hours, 2.00 hours. And I've got a because an amperage, remember amp is a coulomb per second, I've got to go ahead and, <coughs> excuse me, Convert that to seconds. So as we know, a well, one hour is 3,600 seconds, right? 60 times 60. Okay, and then I've got uh, uh, the amperage is 1 million amps. So per one second, we're talking 1 times 10 to the 6 coulombs. Ooh, man, that's a lot of coulombs, right? And then we've got to convert coulombs to moles of electrons, right? And so I'm going to use a Faraday, which is 9, 6... 4.85 coulombs per one mole of electrons. And now I've got to do the moles of electrons. Well, we know that th that uh, aluminum 3 plus plus 3 moles of electrons will yield some aluminum, and that's what's going on in this aluminum uh, electrolysis reaction. So I'm going to write 3 moles of electrons gives us one mole of aluminum and then to continue on let me just skip over that uh, for every one mole of aluminum we get 26.98 grams and when you use the calculator and you work it all out you get 6.71 times 10 to the fifth grams holy cow that's a lot of grams right but think about it we're talking about a lot of coulombs Right, that's a lot of amperage, um, and so you know, at a plant, that's probably a significant amount. They're they're trying to make a lot of aluminum. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. It's over. It's finished. The end of the Richardson podcasting era for my 2013 AP students has uh, finally uh, come to its awesome conclusion. I hope it was good for you guys. Again, like any other time, if you have questions, we'll talk about it in class. See you later.